Good morning, everybody, um, and a special welcome to our guest today, Francois Esterhazen. I am Philippa Geard. I'm the founder and CEO of Recruit My Mom, and uh, this is our third or fourth webinar that we've hosted. Um, and we're really excited to see how the audience is growing and how you are engaging with us on these webinars. We found them to be incredibly valuable um, to our Recruit My Mom community. And today I'm particularly passionate about our topic around confidence. It is certainly something that I have seen as being an area that we as women generally struggle with. Um, and I know that it will resonate with you today. And I'm hoping that by the end of our session, that you will be given some tools that you'll be able to take away with you and really feel a lot more confident in whatever it is that you're reaching for, whatever your endeavors are. So I'm going to introduce Francois um, to you, and then we're going to have this discussion. If for any reason you've missed something we've said or you need to leave early, a recording will be made available. We're going to be putting it on our YouTube channel and you're welcome to look at it again or share it with friends. And um, at the end of the session, we've got a Q&A. So at any time during today's session, please do type your Q&As into the chat box and I will be posing those to Francois at the end of our chat. And um, yeah, we hope that you have a wonderful morning with us this morning. So thank you very much for joining us. So let me tell you just a little bit about Francois. Um, Francois Esterhazen has been helping people to grow and achieve their life goals for over 20 years. First as a youth pastor and then later as a relationship and personal growth, growth coach. Francois's motto, I love this, is if you change your mind, you can transform your life. His passion is empowering people to change their minds. He also loves playing bass guitar, chilies, and thankfully his wife and kids. So Francois, welcome. It's really lovely to have you here and on one of our webinars. I think you are our first um, male um, webinar interviewee on Recruit My Mom. Wow. Um, so yeah, you're very privileged. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you, Philippa. And all of the stuff you said is true, especially the bass playing, the chilies, and my family. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> um, Francois, you know, confidence is, is, is such an important topic, um, and it's such a big topic. And it's something that, um, you know, we read many books about um, working mothers or mothers or, you know, anything to do with work, and the one big factor that comes up is confidence. And what I notice, um, particularly in my years of having worked with, in Recruit My Mom and with so many women from diverse backgrounds, um, is that at different stages of life, we tend to lose confidence. Um, and sometimes I wonder even where we got confidence. Um, but the question I have, and I want to just kick off this morning, is why and how do we lose confidence? Like, how does it happen that we lose it? Or, or, or did we never have it in the first place? So I'm going to yeah, put that over thank to you. you. Yeah, thank you, Philippa. So um, <clears throat> when we were chatting yesterday, Philippa, um, you also mentioned how people find different things that stop them from, from having confidence. And I think that's a very good place to start because that'll give us an idea of what confidence is really about. Um, because all of us throughout our lives, we develop a system to help us navigate life, right? We, we develop a, a belief system that help us make sense of life and make decisions in life. And sometimes uh, you're talking about recruitment or finding a job. We'll say, oh, you know, I, I'm not really confident because I'm too young or I'm too old, or I'm not confident because I'm a white person, or I'm a black person, or I'm not confident about this situation because I'm a man or I'm a woman. And it might be for exactly the same job or opportunity where we doubt or lose confidence based on different things. And the way we do that is, is through this system that we've developed. All of us have one. So uh, I'm going to try and, and show you what I mean by this. Um, 
and I'm going to draw out the, the, the whole system a bit later so you can see all of it. But for now, I want to focus on one specific part. So whenever there's an event in our lives, whether it's an opportunity like a job interview, whatever it might be, we, we behave a certain way in that link to that event. So often we say, you know, I, let, let me use a very common example that I think we can all identify with. So, so when, when you're driving in traffic and someone cuts you off, you know, that's the event. And depending on, on uh, who you are, you might react to that event differently. Some people will maybe divert to sign language or shouting or hooting, and maybe someone else wouldn't be bothered at all. But that behavior, the way we behave in that situation, is, is all about how we assign meaning to that event, what we decide that means. Okay, so we, we'll say, well, I behave that way because that person cut me off. But really, we behave a certain way because of how we feel. We have certain emotions in that situation. We feel a certain way in that situation. So we might feel, in my example now with the traffic, we might feel disrespected. And that's why we react that way. Or we might feel that's unfair. And that's why we behave and react a certain way. But now, and this is where I want to really zoom in now on your question, why? Do we, do we lose confidence is, is all of this is really driven by our thoughts. Great time for my market to dry up. Um, it's all driven by our thoughts, right? So our thoughts and thought patterns we have, that's what really creates the emotion and our emotions is actually what drives our behavior. Whatever the situation is, whatever the event is, right? What that triggers it. And, I like to, to talk about this inner voice because we all talk to ourselves and it's not only one person talking to you, there's, there's quite a few people in our head talking to us. And I discern between three voices. The first one I call the judge. And the main theme of what the judge says is shaming, right? So the judge is always criticizing or shaming us. And it can be very direct, like, um, you're not good enough for this. You'll never um, be able to pull this off. Or um, it can su be subtle, just asking a little question. Is this really for you? Do you think you can do this? Or even more, even broader than that, just ask the question, what's wrong with you? Why do, why do you act this way? Why do you feel this way? You know, robbing us of confidence, just planting little seeds of doubt. So that's the one voice. The other voice I call the cheerleader. And the main theme of the cheerleader is blaming. So the cheerleader is always focused on, as, whereas the judge is internal, the cheerleader is external, focusing on blaming external factors like, um, um, the choices other people make, or if you think about uh, a cheerleader in, a, uh, in, in uh, um, a sport event, the cheerleader will always be on the side of their team, right? So the team is always fine. The team is always the best. Our inner voice, that's the cheerleader, will never find fault with us, but always blame other people or circumstances or the ref, the ref in life, blaming that. And the problem with both of these voices are they they keep us stuck in certain patterns. So if you, if you feel like I'm not really confident or I lack confidence, you can go and, and look at these thoughts that you have and try and assign um, a person to them. Meaning this thought that, that I'm having, what I'm thinking at the moment, is it a judge or is it the cheerleader? So is it, is it criticizing me or is it blaming circumstances? And both are, those disempower us and take away our confidence. So what we really want to try and do, and this is the third voice, I'll write it over here. Um, let me do this to just symbolize it. We've got another small voice, not, maybe you can't even read that now. There's a coach, there's another voice, a coach. So where the judge is shaming, the cheerleader is blaming, the coach is about instructing and encouraging us. So like in any sport arena where you, where you learn a new skill or you have a coach, 
the coach will help you tap into more and more of your potential. But Philippa, what I found is many of us really haven't developed this inner voice. We, we have a strong judge or and a strong cheerleader, but the coach is very underdeveloped. And maybe, as you mentioned before, maybe especially in women, um, we don't have that strong inner voice that gives us the confidence, that instructs us to try things differently or instructs us to behave a certain way, so act a certain way in a certain scenario um, because these other two voices are too strong. So maybe I can, I can pause there for a moment and get back to you, Philippa. So this is why I think uh, we struggle with confidence is yeah. because we don't understand these thoughts that we are having is either shaming or blaming us. And that creates the negative emotions that actually cause us to, in a situation, not have confidence or not be able to behave with confidence or act confidently. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's very insightful, Francois. And I, I mean, I, I absolutely relate to what you were saying in terms of, um, you know, we, we get quite a lot of feedback when um, people are applying for jobs. And I can certainly see um, some of the feedback in what you've said in that, you know, we get people who think they're too old to have, you know, that's why they didn't get the job or, um, or they're the wrong skin color or they, um, you know, they don't speak the language or, you know, whatever. We get all sorts of different reasons why they, you know, they think they didn't get the job. And in fact, most of the time it's none of the above. Um, there's another reason why. Just around the events, and I, I want to get to the question about, what creates confidence. But before you answer that, I just want to speak to a couple of events that I think might speak to our audience that are with us today. And one of those is, is the event of having children um, and the impact that that has, particularly on one's career, or one's trajectory that one's on in, in one's work life. The other might be having just come through COVID. A big one is retrenchment. Um, many people having lost their jobs across this time. Um, and or just an event that takes place in one's life where one can remember a, a leader or somebody or an authority, often a teacher, um, saying something which crushes one's, one's inner self, if one likes. And those are those events that you speak to. And so you have the judge and you have the cheerleader that would, would probably reinforce that event. But now, how, like, how do you create that confidence or how do you get that confidence back having had these quite massive events that will take place in one's life yeah. thank you philippa um you said so many things that i want to want to respond to but let me start with with the end so how do you create that so i want to add another little layer to my my image here is uh, this whole system that we've developed over time. So including maybe teachers telling us certain things or parents or the, the, the way we were socialized growing up, you know, that's what develops the system, but all of it rests on what we believe. So our beliefs, our belief system. And our beliefs is not just about, you know, certain things, um, I believe this or I believe that, or even religious stuff. It's also, uh, what I include in that is, is our definitions, for example. So what you define as being happy, that becomes your belief, and that will affect the way you think, feel, and behave. So like being a mom, um, you spend a all this time with your kids and now maybe for whatever reason you decide to get back into the workforce but now these two voices will start talking to you right one will maybe make the judge will make you feel ashamed for even wanting to be away from your kids i know many moms struggle with that you know shouldn't i just have this overwhelming feeling of wanting to spend all my time with my kids and now I'm going to leave them with someone else so I can go work. So that's one, one thing. Or the blaming, you know, maybe it's um, circumstances financially, you have to go to back to work and now you're blaming and both of those keep you stuck. And when you want to approach the workforce or an interview or whatever, 
those voices are still running in the back of your mind because maybe you believe that a, a mother should be with the kids or maybe you believe that you should always enjoy being with your kids for example um, and those definitions determine this whole system um, what you think will be based on these beliefs what you feel will be based on these beliefs and ultimately how you behave and how you act or react will be based on these beliefs Another one that I think is very, very helpful to understand what, what makes up our beliefs is formulas. I call them formulas and they simply go like this. If then, if then, so if this happens, I will react like this. If this happens, I will feel like this. So it's to go back to my very simple example in, in traffic. If you have reinforced that behavior of, if someone cuts me off, I get, you know, I, I get completely upset and I let them know that I don't approve of that. You, you now create this formula and you believe this is how you have to react in that situation, right? So when that situation comes, that's the event, that's the trigger and you automatically behave in that way. So, Ultimately, to, to create confidence or to um, recreate it or find it again, you have to focus on the beliefs. And that can be quite an interesting process to discover. What do I actually believe? And also find certain beliefs that, that seem helpful, but actually can be very harmful. Um, I'll give you an example of that. When, when I work with couples, um, maybe about four or five years ago, I started noticing this pattern. So two people will, will come for, for, for couples counseling and they both will have this kind of complaint. They feel like I'm giving all the love, but I'm not getting any back. So both people in this relationship feel they're giving all the love, but they're getting nothing back. So what's going on there? How's that possible that both give the love and still both don't feel that they are loved. So I started asking people, they believe around love. I asked for their definition of love. And here's the most common and most harmful one I found. And when you hear it, you'll, you'll probably go, but that sounds, you know, that sounds fine. That sounds healthy. So love is to put the other person first. That sounds very good, right? Should be great for a relationship, but actually it's devastating because you cannot always put another person first. And if that's your definition and you believe that's what love is, when you don't put that person first, you don't feel like you're loving them. And especially the other way around, when they don't put you first, you don't feel love. And that's all based on, I believe this is what love is. So the process of discovering what belief is actually keeping this specific system in place whether it's um whether you realize like it's it's my behavior that i want to change where whether it's like i'm always feeling anxious in certain situations or maybe with with using this little model i gave you you realize you know i'm always shaming myself this judge voice is loud whatever part of it is this is that you want to change try and be curious well ultimately what do i believe that keeps all of this in place. Because some of you probably have tried to change your behavior or just tell you, you, you tell yourself, just be more confident, go in there and, and be confident. But as long as the belief is in place, you cannot shift this. So it's stuck. And as, as long as the belief is in place, the unhealthy belief, even if it sounds wonderful and beautiful, um, you cannot develop the, the voice of the coach this voice cannot grow. And that's the voice that actually empowers you and instructs you how to become more confident, how to develop the emotions uh, around confidence and how to act confident. All right. That's a lot, Philip, but did I get, did I get all of your questions? Yes, you did. And in fact, we've got a, we've got a comment that's come in from the Q and a from Lindsay who says, I find it very hard to silence the judge when others, like I mentioned, the teacher, say things that reinforce your own wrong belief, you know, about yourself based on a biased view. 
Um, and, you know, for, for Lindsay, she's been at home, she's got small children, attention's always divided. And so, you know, you're on this emotional roller coaster. So what I'm hearing from you, um, Francois, would be for Lindsay to sit down and work out what it is that's her belief system that's possibly reinforcing that judging voice um, that's mm -hmm. making her feel in that way. Um, so, so maybe you can just talk a little bit more about yes. attacking those belief systems. Yes. So, so let me try and give you a tool, Lindsay. Thank you for, for that comment and question. Let me try and give you a bit of a tool there as well. So um, this will be, all be recorded so you'll have this information. But let me, let me zoom in on the emotions a bit. So in this whole system, I can, you know, I can go on for a long time about each part of this and how we can construct it. But on that question, I'd like to help you um, just get a, a better grip and a better grip and understanding about that. So we can use our emotions based on our, so let me just to be clear right here. So the old belief system, where, where, whether it's from our past teachers, current, and it's the judge's voice that's so loud based on these beliefs, um, creates certain emotions, right? And uh, emotions in itself is not a problem, but I find there's, there's a big difference between legitimate emotions, meaning um, if you are sad because you, you lost someone close to you, or if you are disappointed because you didn't get a specific job, that, that makes sense, that's legitimate emotion. But often, when it comes to lack of confidence, self-doubt, anxiety, stress, nervousness, it's not legit in the sense that it's only based on this belief system. And it's not helpful for you in that situation to feel that way because our behavior is driven by our emotions. So all of those emotions, I'm gonna call negative emotions. So I don't mean that the emotions are negative. Please just be clear on that. Just if it's created by this unhealthy belief system, um, I call it a negative emotion or um, um, not legit emotion. Those emotions all become clues. And what I mean by that is if you can pinpoint those emotions, say for example, you feel like um, a certain sense of um, anxiety. Um, and you know that this is what always causes me to, to, to doubt and it's based on this judge's voice and so forth. You know that that emotion is linked to the old belief system. So whenever you feel that anxiety, that becomes your clue. Ah, wait a minute. This is because I'm on the old belief system. This is why I'm feeling this way. But now we can also use emotions as goals, meaning how would I rather want to feel in exactly the same event, the same situation? So previously I felt anxious and that's a clue that I'm busy with the old belief system. But now I want to feel maybe confident could be one of those, but let's use another one because we, we the overarching theme here is confidence. Um, relaxed. Let's say uh, instead of that, I want to feel completely relaxed can't talk and write at the same time. So now you use emotions as a goal. I want to feel relaxed. And, and Lindsay, now you can use that to discover your system, your model, not only the old system, the old belief system, but create the new one, discover the new one. And that's how you create the confidence. For me to feel relaxed, what, what thoughts do I need to think? What need what do i need to think you know what's the what, what will the coach say right what will the coach say what kind of thoughts do i need to have and if that's the kind of thoughts i, I have what do i need to believe for me to have those thoughts to feel relaxed and then ultimately to act with more confidence or more engaging or whatever the end result they will be that's how you discover it and sometimes um it comes quite quickly. Sometimes people discover that quite quickly. Other times it takes a while because the old system is stubborn, right? And the old system that you've developed, um, you developed it because that's what made you feel safe and comfortable. Even though um, 
it, it's not a happy place. It's not the way you want to be. It's familiar. It's familiar. And because it's familiar, it feels safe and comfortable. The coach will direct you into adventure, right? Uncomfortable, I ask you to risk. So maybe let's use the confidence. So the coach will ask you to risk asking a question or behaving in a way that'll feel completely wrong based on the old system. The old system will say, no, don't act like that. If you act like that, people will think you're arrogant. So that might be a belief, but the coach says, no, act like that because it will convey confidence. So the old system will say, no, don't do it. But the new system will say, risk it, experiment, try it. And when you try that, you, you open up new emotions and new possibilities. Is that clear enough, Lippa? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there's an interesting comment here as well from Janet, who says that belief systems she's discovering um, that hers are based on upbringing and societal structure, tradition. And now she's starting to ask, what do I believe? But it is a difficult journey. And I think that's what you're explaining is, is, is that this is, it's, it is a difficult journey. It, 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 is, is, it is uncomfortable to move out of our norms and where we naturally lend ourselves into or bend ourselves into or to lean into. Um, and it requires work to be able to change those mindsets effectively and the, and the belief systems. Um, yeah. and, and like you mentioned earlier, I, I strongly believe that if you change your mind, you can transform your life. And this, this is what I mean. Yeah. Um, uh, and even oh, something like, sorry, Philippa, go ahead. No, no, you can continue and then I'm going to ask you another question. Okay, cool. Um, so even saying like, discovering your beliefs is difficult. That can be a belief that makes it difficult, right? So what I like to, to highlight here is this, this little model that, that I developed, I developed because I wanted something that's very simple. This is very simple to understand and grasp how one creates the other and ultimately becomes visible in the way we behave. And uh, like you, you, you can see in the comments, most of us understand you all it comes from somewhere from the past upbringing socialization one whatever it might be that shaped this but then we also believe that it's it, it's hard to change it's hard to change and and it's not hard to change um it might be difficult to sustain change meaning you do something and then you fall back into the old habits but as soon as you realize that you can go back to the new way and keep on rewriting this, this system that you've created in the past. So it's, it might be difficult to sustain, but it's not complex. And sometimes we make it complex to affirm that it's difficult when it's not. So here's, here's an example of how powerfully we can use uh, the way our brains work to shift our mood. Um, especially when I'm talking about clues and goals uh, um, with regards to emotions. So when, say for example, you, you are in an argument with someone, right? You're in a fight with someone, you're upset, you're really worked up. And then the phone rings and you pick up the phone and within five seconds, it's your best friend. Within five seconds, you are in a totally different state. You're friendly, you're joking, you're kidding around, you're laughing. And then you put down the phone, you hang up immediately. Within a few seconds, you're back into that angry state. How do we do that? How do we do that? We shift our focus. We change our minds. We change our beliefs in that moment. You believe that you are capable of being friendly with this friend of you. But then you also believe that now I have to go back to being angry. That's a belief. And that's how we sustain these old systems. So whenever you realize I'm acting in a way that I don't want to. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Sorry, I didn't even see it. I'm so sorry. It's okay. And I'm whenever you realize you're acting in a way that you don't want to act, or that you're feeling in a way that you don't want to feel, or you're thinking those shaming or blaming thoughts, 
that means you're busy with a system that's created to keep you safe and comfortable. Then you can challenge that system by changing the belief, looking for the belief and then changing the belief. Another question I get often on this, Philippa, is people will say, okay, but what, what if it's confirmed? And that's onto the, the, um, speaking to the comment that you read. What if my situation or circumstances confirm this old belief, this thing that I believe that's keeping me stuck? The, the point of changing your belief system, changing your mind ultimately, is not about it being true or false. In this system, it's irrelevant. It's ultimately about what do I need to believe that will help me act the way I want to act? What, what, what do I need to believe that will help me act the way I want to act? That's all. And you create those beliefs. You create, you write down those beliefs that will help you act the way you want to act because they will create the new thoughts, the new emotions, and ultimately empower you because all our actions are ultimately driven by our emotions. Even if you are the most logical person on earth, emotions still drive your behavior. All right, does that make sense? Yes, it does. So I'm going to ask you, because uh, Yolandi's jumped, jumped to where I am as well, which is, is, is let's, you know, let's, let's do some practical examples, Francois. So I'm going to give you a scenario. Um, and so today is all about how does one develop confidence when one is wanting to return to work? So let's, you know, let's use that, that example um, for now. So either somebody's taken a gap because they've, taken some time off to be with their children or possibly they've been out of work for a while they've been retrenched they haven't been able to find another job in this economic situation um, so you know can you just talk us through a really practical um, example of somebody who possibly is struggling with with why they're not being able to find a job you can choose either one of the scenarios either the retrenched one or the mom wanting to go back to work and let's just work through that okay uh, how, uh, how I will approach that is whenever you think about the situation, either um, you, you're being retrenched and, and you have to find a new job is, focus on how that makes you feel. What do you feel when you think about that? All right. Maybe you're feeling uh, rejected or unimportant. And when you pinpoint those emotions, which can be hard as well, right, to, to name our emotions, usually we just say sad and mad. That's, that's the limits we have. But if we explore more of the emotions, we find the patterns, all right? So say, let's say you feel rejected and unimportant. Um, then be curious, okay, if I feel this, who's speaking? Now we're going to the judge and the cheerleader. So maybe the judge is saying, yeah, they, they'll never appoint someone like you because of this and this and this. This is wrong with you or you've done this in the past or you usually act like this, whatever the reasons might be. Okay, so that's, that's the thing. That's the thought. And now if you're curious, okay, what do I believe? Maybe I, I believe that um, in order for me to get back into the workforce or get a job, I need to be someone different or I need to be younger or older in the examples that you uh, mentioned earlier. And now you ask the question, okay, I've pinpointed the belief. Does this help me to behave the one, the way I would need to behave or want to behave to, to get a job or be better in an interview? No, it doesn't. And as soon as you say, no, this doesn't, now you know you need to change it. And then write something that will help you be confident. All right. For example, one belief that you might put in there is these people are just like me just like me and i can be myself and talk to them on, on that kind of level maybe that gives you the makes you comfortable enough or creates the emotions that you need to behave the way you, you want to be um or you might say um if i don't go for it flat out so now there's a formula you use formula if i don't go for it flat out i might miss the opportunity so now the new, remember the new system is about risk and adventure. You're risking because the old system will say, don't go flat out. Don't go, you know, give it everything because 
then it will hurt so much more when you don't get the job or you don't get the opportunity, right? Because he wants to keep you safe and comfortable. The coach will say, risk, go for it, try. And now you, you, you are able to, to go for it. So it's still, you, need, you still need to act on these things. But I found that the more we get clear on what's driving the old system and we can look at it and see, ah, this is what I actually believe. And it's keeping me safe and comfortable, but it's maybe also keeping me without a job or it's keeping me from applying even for a job, even trying because I'm already the, 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 the coach and the, uh, the cheerleader and the judge is already in my ear. Nah, you don't even apply. You know, stay safe and comfortable. Is that, is that practical enough, uh, Philippa? Yes, absolutely. I think that's a, a really great way of um, demonstrating it. And I, I like that you say, and I was just busy typing it actually, which is do not stay safe and comfortable. I was actually just put that into the chat, but rather it's about risk and adventure. Um, and, and, you know, I, I understand um, because we, we obviously see a lot of applications coming in. Um, and, you know, the number of applications obviously in this eco economy, e economy is obviously outstripping the number of jobs that are available. So obviously, in this type of environment, people are going to get more rejections than normal. Um, and there's a level of resilience that I think needs to, to build up in one. Um, and I just want to ask you, Francois, you know, is it possible to retain your confidence through a constant barrage of negativity um, and um, you know is is that realistic yes it is it is realistic and it's and it is possible if you understand that your confidence is not based on external things right so that's one thing it's not based on external things so uh, if you if you base it on external things and those things get taken away, your your confidence is shattered. So I, I also work with uh, rugby players here in Stellenbosch at the Stellenbosch Academy of Sport, and, and and often with 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 athletes, I find that when that opportunity that that starting position in the team gets taken away, the confidence is gone because it was based on that position or the coach backing me. So when they experience a slump in their playing even, the confidence disappears because it was based on that. So one, your confidence is not based on the external things. And that takes practice, right? Because the belief system will tell you, no, it is based because that person confirms this and that one confirms that. So challenge that belief system once again. Secondly, it's based on internal stuff, but now we've identified exactly how that internal system works. So if you look at the internal system that keeps your confidence in place, when you lose confidence, it can only mean one thing. You start believing something, maybe because of the barrage of negative feedback, that's now taking away your confidence. And if you ask the question, is this the way I want to be? And does it increase my chances of getting what I want in life? Whether it's a job, whether it's being a certain kind of mom, whatever, does it increase my chances to be that kind of person? If the answer is no, then change that belief and rewrite it. And I think someone um, said in the comments, write it out, stick it against the wall to remind yourself, I can shift my focus like that. Um, and maybe just on a very practical level on how the brain works. It's, this is fascinating to me. So we have a, a, a system the reticular activating system in our brain. So whenever you want to buy a new car, or you're interested in a new phone or anything like that, and you do a bit of research, you're checking out the options, and now you drive, once again, you're on the road, what car do you see? Suddenly, you see the car you are interested in everywhere. It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. Because you've now programmed this system in your mind, telling it this is important, scan the environment for evidence of this. Now, this is fascinating. When you understand that, if, if you have a belief that says, mm, I am not confident, so I want to jump straight to that. If you believe that you are not confident, 
your brain will scan for evidence of that, both internally, so the voices that speak to you will confirm that, and externally. You will find, see there, see there, see there. So if instead you program your brain and say, uh, I can, for example, learn to be confident. Now you're scanning again for opportunities to learn. You see, uh, what does a confident person do? What, what's their body language like? How do they act? How do I guess they feel when they, they act that way? Right now you're opening new opportunities and you're scanning your environment um, for, for those things. And you'll pick those things up. So once again, for me, Philippa, it goes back to identify the belief that's holding you back and change it. Change yeah. that system. Absolutely. I think that's powerful. If you believe you are not confident, your brain will scan for evidence to support this belief, which is the supporting of negative belief systems again, which is fascinating. Um, we, um, just another question is, um, how do you identify the judge or the cheerleader voice? So you spoke about that earlier, is um, the judge being the internal voice, the cheerleader being um, that recognition or the blaming of what's happening externally? Do you want to just quickly go through that again if you've got two yeah. voices? So, yeah, yeah, the judge would definitely be about shaming you, criticizing you. So I say... I say no BS, meaning no blaming and shaming. Stop the BS. <laughs> so no blaming others and circumstances and also no shaming yourself. So sometimes, Philippa, we'll fight really, really hard. And this ties into confidence in a massive way. We'll fight really hard to remain powerless. We'll fight to remain powerless. We'll fight to stay in this old belief system. Why? Because if I'm powerless, I'm innocent. If I'm powerless, I'm innocent. And if I'm innocent, it's nothing I can do. It's not my fault. Whether it's internal, the judge's voice, or external, the, the cheerleader voice, it's not my fault. But as soon as we take responsibility, there's risk, there's adventure, there's exploration. And now it's up to me. Now I have to do as much as I can do to get what I want. And we, we often, we shy away from that. We want to stay here where we, we are innocent. So what I'm hearing you saying is, is, is that the confidence that we're seeking is largely taking responsibility for our own confidence rather than seeking external factors to reinforce our confidence. Am I hearing you correctly? Can I respond to that? Yes. So taking responsibility, taking responsibility of what you can control. And what you can control are these four things. You can control your behavior. You can control your emotions, even though we want to believe that we cannot. I just feel the way I want, or I just feel the way I feel because of what happened. You can change that as well. Um, our thoughts and our beliefs. Take full responsibility of that. That's not easy to do. That's the difficult part, but it's very simple. It's not complex. So I also in my, in my work as a therapist, I started shifting the focus away from trying to deal with the past and working out the past and where this, the, this and that and that come from. Because what I found is that it takes my clients a long time to make a shift and it's very painful. And me, myself, my wife and I also went through uh, all the training that I did to, to qualify to do this work. We did it diligently and it's, it's slow and it's painful and the gains you get are very small. So I don't focus on that anymore because all of those stuff created beliefs. So we go straight to the beliefs identify the beliefs and understand that you can take responsibility, take your power, stop being powerless and innocent and change those beliefs. And when you, when you feel like oh, I'm feeling the way I used to feel, that's the clue. Oh, I'm back with the old belief system. Let's, let's move to the new system. As you can see, Philippa, I can, I can, um, I get all excited about this. <laughs> the more I talk.
I love your passion, Francois. I love it. Um, uh, Michelle von Fieren has written that um, it's a profound insight on the belief that powerless, when you're feeling powerless, you, you, you become the innocent party. Um, and that is very insightful. Um, and Anna Marie says we must listen not um, to live in the past, but I'm trying to stop living in the past. Drastic changes when I live today, and that is right. You know, if we if we live in the past, it makes it very difficult to move forward. And I love that you, you know, in your in the way you 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 coach and and have done therapies is that you've realised that dwelling in the past is not helpful. Um, and we really do need to reach forward and own what we can and control what we can. Um, and I'm just seeing some other comments coming in. Um, is there another comment? Make a quick comment there. We, we don't have to try to not live in the past. We can just stop living in the past. It's that simple. That's what I mean. It's not difficult and complex. It's simple. But because maybe we believe, oh, well, that's, but, but wait a minute, that's, that's hard. or this, uh, it, it might be hard, but it's not complex. But once you start experimenting and, and developing the voice of the coach that instructs you and encourages you, challenges you to do things differently and, and try new things, we, we start opening up possibilities, not only in life, not only for work, but within our own potential. We access more of who we are. Um, so, uh, a comment from Antlantla. Um, so she says, so we have no control of our external or past influences, but rather that we focus on what we can control. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, okay. that's the point. Any energy, any time and energy that you invest in things that you cannot control is wasted energy. There's zero return on investment there. So, if I tell you, pay, you know, pay me 10,000 grand uh, any, uh, every Monday. And on Friday, I will give you 0% interest on that. And then next Monday, please do the same. No one will take that deal. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. But we do that. We, we invest in the same way in something that gives us zero return on investment all the time, cognitively, emotionally. We play out scenarios. We spend time and energy on those scenarios. Do they give us anything back? No, nothing. But we keep on making that investment. So if you rather invest time and energy on this, these four areas in your life that you have full control over, then you start getting return on investment. And when you get that re return on investment, your influence to the outside world increases but you have to focus on what you can control. That makes perfect sense. It does make a lot of sense. So Nicole writes, I've just caught my BS kick in for belief. <laughs> I love it. I think you've, you've completely transformed the word BS for all of us. <laughs> um, so we've got, um, we've got 10 minutes left. And um, while we're waiting, if you have any more questions for Francois, um, please just pop them into the chat while I um, while we are to, while we are, are starting to um, wind down. But I wanted to, Francois, you you have a course which goes more into detail in this. Um, won't you just tell some of the you know people that have joined us today, and and this will be recorded and available about the course, and you know what what can be expected. Yeah, so so Philippa, actually, I, I don't have a course yet, but. Um, when I was preparing for this and, and, and asking around and thinking about what would be a great topic to talk about to moms, confidence was a big thing. And also with people signing up for this, I think that was confirmed. So I, I thought, okay, but I can do a webinar and I can give people some input, but obviously they, there's much more. And how do you incorporate this into your life more? So what I'm thinking of doing, and this will be the offer, um, to anyone who watches this later on, it will only start in May, is to do a six-week live training, meaning week by week, we go through the content, I give you input, I do coaching with you on the call. This, of course, is all recorded. And if you are one of the attendees of the course like that, you, you'll get it for a much cheaper price, 
but if you want to buy the course afterwards, it'll be more expensive. So I want people that attempt um, um, to, to get both the benefit of paying less, but also the benefit of the life coaching and interaction. And the only reason I'm doing this is I don't have a course like that. I, I think there's a need for it. And, and if you go to the life training with me, you'll help me create that course. You'll help me, but you also help other people like yourself to um, get access to this information. So that's kind of the idea I have. And um, I think Esther will, will send out an, an email with a link. If you're interested, you can register there and, and we can make that happen if there's a need. That's great. Yeah, thanks, Francois. And I'm, I mean, I know that when we spoke earlier just regarding the the courses is, is that I worked it out it's at about 130 rand for the live event per session which is really a, a really um, manageable um, so um, uh, Esther who is our digital marketing manager will be sending out the details to everybody around this course if you're wanting to attend but I wanted to read you something Francois I think this is so lovely it's from Lindsay Peterson and she says I'm brave I'm confident I work hard I can handle a lot I learn quickly great new beliefs that our inner coach can communicate to us on a daily basis. So I think your job is done. Well, <laughs> there we go. See, it's straightforward and simple, just like that. <laughs> and I like the one that I, I work hard. I like that. That's a belief. I work hard. So if there's a challenge, I step up to it. I work hard. At it. Awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then Renuka says, I deal a lot with yo-yo confidence. This is a nice yeah. new one. Today I'm 110% confident, but tomorrow I think of every excuse or negative thought not to run with my idea or decision. And then she says, help please. So I think yes. we're going to have to sign up. I, I, now I want to comment on that quickly. That is the cheerleader. Because one day the cheerleader will tell you, you are the best, you can go for it, everyone, you know, you're better than the rest and do the song and dance or whatever. And then you, your confidence will be up there. But the next day, something happens. And like, oh, wait a minute, that person's actually better with the blaming, blaming, and then it'll go down. So that's not the coach. That's the cheerleader talking. That, that if, you, confidence, if your confidence does that, like the yo-yo, that, that's what's happening. Yeah, that's, that's very good. That's very insightful, really. Um, I see Esther's put another word, a comment again from Tantla that this is all empowering, empowering in changing negative perceptions about oneself. In my case, I know I have more to offer. The issue is an age factor. Um, how can the mindset of the potential employer that age is just a number change? And Clantla, and I think that that's, yeah, that's, you know, that's again, I suppose that belief system, isn't it, Francois, that we're talking about that employers might have about, um, about people? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when we take complete responsibility for what we can control, right? we can control this um, and stop investing time and energy in what we, we can control. That's what the CC is for. Um, instead of investing in there where we get 0% return on investment, we take it away. We say, no, I'm, on, I'm investing all of the year where I have control. And this makes us grow. This makes, makes us become a bigger, better version of ourselves, bigger, better person. And this increase also increases our influence. So we cannot control other people, but we can influence them. But only if we take control of ourselves, if we focus on ourselves. So with an employer, um, you cannot control that person's mind, but you can influence their mind, but only by focusing here. If you try and you know, control them and, and change their mind about things, you might fail. Um, uh, you might make them uh, dig in even more in, in their belief. But if you show up as your true authentic self, either that might change their mind, that might influence in them, away, them in a way to change their mind, or it might just be that you are not for them. They can handle you. Yeah, I like that. I really do. And we, um, I know that when we look at the CVs, you know, we, we get so many powerfully written motivational email letters that come with those CVs. And, and they're so powerful because you can see the confidence that comes 
um, across and that cuts through so much you know age um you know whatever your background it doesn't matter you know that that confidence really does so i'm i am aware of time so i'm going to um um yeah just one more question francois and then i think we're gonna we're gonna close our session um which is just around other people's perceptions of you when you've got a past um and they keep bringing up the past um and that you actually want to move forward but other people around you keep bringing up your past um, and I, I think that probably brings me, I, I think back of your drawings and probably that locus of control again. Um, yep. Do you want to speak to that? Yes, let me, let me make a, maybe one small comment on that is you have to completely accept that you cannot control another person. So they are free to think believe and feel and behave whichever way they want so if someone keeps reminding you and trying to take you back that's based on their belief system and once you empower yourself and understand i have to invest time and energy here you start developing uh, the this objective view of those kind of comments you observe those comments you see them oh okay that is your opinion. That's where you are stuck. Fine. You are welcome to stay there. You're welcome to think that way. I'm not even going to, going to try and change your mind about that. Because the judge and the cheerleader will say, no, 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 I'll go talk to them, prove them wrong, you know, negotiate and, and show evidence. And you'll see you're powerless because you cannot control that person. And that's what I'm saying. Take that same time and energy invested here and grow. And the more you grow, the more you observe that as, okay, that's you. You do you kind of thing. I love that. You do you. I, I, that's very powerful. Um, Francois, you've left us with many great tools this morning. Um, and I know that people um, will be really interested in the course that you're going to be running. And so we will share that information. But um, firstly, I wanted to just um, thank um, everybody who attended today and for the very interesting questions that they posed. It's always lovely to have an interactive session where we're answering people's questions. So to all the Recruit My Mom community that joined us, thank you. It really was a pleasure to have you. To Francois for joining us and sharing his insight and knowledge with us. Um, thank you, Francois. It's been such a privilege to, to speak with you this morning. And I know that, um, yeah, I, th I think you're going to have a lot of people getting in touch with you on how we can even do this better. And so before you go, I just want to let you know that our next um, the webinar is going to be on resilience. Um, one of the newsletters that I wrote was around resilience, and we had an overwhelming response around how do we continue to build resilience. So the next one we're doing is on resilience. So look out for information on that. But Francois, thank you. If you want to just um, in some closing words, and then we're going to close the session. Thank you. Oh, uh, I would like to uh, say something else. <laughs> Thank you, Philippa. <laughs> you probably can see that. Uh, another drawing. I'm a great drawer. <laughs> so, my wife's actually an artist. So, what's interesting to me is, is, is if we think about our capability um, and our capacity, or well, two more C's there for you, and our potential. We might think, okay, maybe I have like 20% more potential to develop. But what I found is, you know, it's not like when you develop yourself more, you use up that potential and now you have 10% potential. What I found is when you develop and grow this inner world, this, this, this new belief system, suddenly when you get to that edge, oh, wait, there's more potential. I found more potential. Now I can access more of my potential, but it's not visible or accessible when you are still here. So that's just a bit of encouragement to keep, keep working with this and keep growing. But thank you so, so much for having me and um, giving me this, this opportunity to share my passion with, with a few other people. Uh, pleasure and your passion it, it, you know it really is clear to see your passion Francois and you've left us really with some really insightful information and some tools to work with so thank you everybody have a wonderful Thursday um, and we'll see you at the next webinar thank you Francois